Max Holloway has announced he's done with featherweight and will compete at lightweight from now on. As he still has the BMF belt, he can have a good time at lightweight. By the way, despite getting knocked out from the first time in his career, he doesn't think Ilya Traporia has crazy knockout power and is the same as everyone else he has fought. The guy who knocked him out at GFC 308 replied to Conor McGregor who recently posted another negative tweet about the top featherweights. Toporia says he will F him up whenever he see him inside or outside of the octagon. Ilya Toporia also replied to Cristiano Ronaldo who was calling Toporia arrogant and picking Max Holloway to beat him before UFC 308. Toporia says he didn't expect someone like Ronaldo to be unable to distinguish between confidence and arrogance. Jorogan sees him as the perfect modern fighter who doesn't have any disadvantage or weakness. This perfect fighter has got his street mural in Barcelona where his fans are loving it. And I think we have found a guy who will stand and trade with Ilya Toporia in the first 10 seconds. Diego Lopez says his fight with Ilya Toporia will be a clash. Lopez says he likes the clash and won't be backing up. If Ilya moves forward, he's going to run into a wall. And last news from UFC 308 fighters is that Arman Petrosian says the spinning punch from Shara Bolaj Magomedov that knocked him out was just a lucky punch and hopes to get a rematch in the future. Now let's move towards UFC 309 news. Tom Aspinall claims Dana White and John Jones are holding the heavyweight title hostage. He says will be in the New York at UFC 309 and will serve as the backup fighter for the main events and plans to confront the winner in the octagon. He also says he will jump in on one hour notice if he has to and beats either of them. Daniel Cormier also agrees with Espinal and believes he is the current best heavyweight fighter. Number 1 contender for the next lightweight title shot, Arman Sarukyan talked about UFC 309 co-main event, a clash of top lightweights Oliveira and Chandler. Sarukyan believes it's an easy fight for Oliveira and he's gonna either talk him out or knock him out. He is so sure that Michael Chandler will definitely lose this fight. By the way, I think Sarukyan should be more concerned about his own fight because the boys are planning to repeat history. Habib's cousin Osman Ormagomedo, who is the current Bellator lightweight champion, plans to dominate in the UFC after Islam either finishes his career or eventually moves up to the welterweight. He says we should expect him fighting in the UFC in just two years. And now something about UFC 310. Number 1 contender for the next bantamweight title shot, Omar Nurmagomedov confirms he was offered the title fight at UFC 310 which he had accepted. He only declined a March date because of Ramadan. Omar said that if Mirab doesn't accept the fight, he will take the dong fight and won't wait for him. By the way, Bilal Muhammad is heartbroken after hearing that UFC now plans for an interim welterweight belt after he pulled out of UFC 310. Bilal says he understands Shavkat's situation that he wants to fight but it doesn't make any sense because he's out only for 6 weeks and not 6 months. Alex Pereira, who was supposed to save UFC 310 but not even responding to Ankalaev's callouts, now reveals in a recent interview that his hand still hurts from punching Khalil Rountree Jr. at UFC 307. He also revealed more details about his villain role in a new A24 horror movie. He says he is going to do the whole movie without saying anything like the Terminator and at the end of the movie, he is gonna speak one word and and that's Tama. Now let's move towards UFC Edmonton. Amir Albazi reacts to his loss from Brandon Moreno and promises that he will be back. His fellow flyweight contender Brandon Royval is now fed up with demanding another title shot. He says he has heard that Andy Ciudo is leaving the bantamweight division and coming back down at flyweight. So he had loved to be the one that welcomed him back to 125 pounds.
And the final news from the UFC is also about UFC 310, which is a new fight announcement. Nate the Chain Landwehr vs. Duhu Choi is added to the UFC 310 card on December 7th. We have got some big news from the boxing world too. Frank Warren's Queensberry have signed a global broadcast deal with Dazzin that will see them unite with Eddie Hens Matchroom on the same platform starting from April 2025. Warren says he could not be more pleased that Queensberry is joining Dazzin. This is a brilliant move for fighters as well as for the fans. Daniel Dubois has welcomed a potential fight versus Tabu Wardley next and was also called out by WBO interim heavyweight champion Joseph Parker. Dubois promoter Frank Warren says he likes these fights but there are a few other fights as well. Warren says they'll sit down as a team and pick the right opponent for Dubois. And lastly, following his loss to Jesse Bam Rodriguez, John Francisco Estrada will be moving up to Bantamweight for his next fight. The WBC has already made Estrada number one in their latest Bantamweight rankings, setting up a potential fight with reigning champion Junto Nakatani. And that's all for today. Now you are updated with the fight world. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna stay updated. Now like the video if you enjoyed it and then do whatever you want.